This episode is sponsored by Laura Bauer. They are Neil, a high school friend, supporting from New Hampshire. Thanks, Laura. Hello and welcome back to Film Pro Productivity and Success, the podcast that helps film professionals and other creative people, all creative people really, let's face it folks, to live a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 109, The Dunning-Kruger Effect. The biggest idiot you will meet in life will be the person that thinks they know it all. Christopher Jones, unquote. In last week's show, I talked about outcomes and why you might want them and what you could do to achieve them. If that sounds interesting to you, then head back and have a listen. But today, I'm talking about a type of cognitive bias, it's called, I'll explain what that is a little bit later, that causes people to overestimate their knowledge or ability, particularly in areas with which they have little or no experience. It also counts for people who underestimate themselves as well, but I'm just about to get into that. The Dunning-Kruger effect is what I'm talking about, and that is when a person does not have the skills or ability in a specific area, but sees themselves as fully equipped to give opinions or carry out tasks in that field, even though objective measures or people around them may disagree. They are unaware that they have not got the necessary capabilities. And as I said a second ago, it also suggests that people with less competence in a given area are more likely to unknowingly overestimate their per- their competence, while high performers, better perform- performers, often have a tendency to underestimate their skills and knowledge. And some of you might already be thinking, is this social media he's talking about? Everyone's an expert on social media. In fact, everyone seems to be an expert these days in general. It's a, it's a thing that drives me mad. And that's kind of why I want to raise this. I want to raise it with you because time and again in the past, I've found myself believing what some idiot has told me about themselves. And I think that it's something you should look out for in today's modern world. I continually face the problem that completely inexperienced people these days seem to think that because they can watch a YouTube video or have read about something on social media through the eye of skewed media, believe that they are suddenly experts without the experience, without the time put into actually doing a task or a job or a career. (laughs) I've got to mention it in the world of fight coordination, for example, it is not uncommon for me to do a fight workshop, for example, and the very next week to have someone who attended that three-year workshop calling themselves a fight coordinator on social media. It's a nightmare because it it can so easily lead to accidents, etc. And and the legitimate fight directors in Scotland are actually standing shoulder to shoulder on this. It's not a way of keeping down people on their way up at all. It's just that there's going to be an accident, a serious accident. If, If employers start to believe what some of these people are saying. Anyway, that's me off on one. Raising the topic here might at least forewarn you, though, that they're out there or help you to recognise the ones that are already in your life. I'm also raising it because of accurate thought, that productivity identifier, which I think is important. It goes along with high-level thinking, and that is the ability to recognise the difference between facts and fantasy. I think it's a key productivity skill, in fact. So this was named after psychologists David Dunning and Justin Kruger and published in 1999. The Dunning-Kruger effect simply states, in their wording, that people's perception of their own skill often does not match reality. And in psychology, this refers to a cognitive bias about unfounded beliefs that we might have often without realising it. Psychologists have been looking into why people sometimes think they can do more or less than they actually can. And one possible reason they've come up with is the lack of skill in itself. In other words, people don't know what they don't know. (laughs) And another possible reason relates to a lack of insight. People are unable to see clearly what they can and cannot do because they don't have the understanding they need to do it, if that makes sense. And In the words of Samuel Johnson, in fact, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. It only hastens fools to rush in where angels fear to tread. 
Another contributing factor is sometimes that that tiny bit of knowledge on the subject can lead people to mistakenly believe that they know all there is to know about a subject. And as that old saying, that Samuel Johnson saying goes, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. A person might have the slimmest bit of awareness about a subject, yet they think, due to the Dunning-Kruger effect, that they believe that he or she is an expert in that matter. And people really come to believe this when they really know very little at all. And if a person consistently overestimates their ability, they may also be more likely to reject feedback. And this can play a role in continued underperformance. For example, if a student accepts an axon feedback after scoring low on an exam, then they are far more likely to do better next time. However, those who already feel that they know enough may disregard feedback because they don't see a need in it. This prevents them from learning and progressing as much as they could. There's something in play here uh, about my listeners to this podcast, I think, as well. I think uh, largely you're listening to a podcast like this, you know, productivity advisory kind of lesson-based podcast because you're trying to learn new things. The people that le- that need to know a lot of these lessons are the ones who already assume that they know it all, and there's an awful lot of them out there. Anyway, the Dunning-Kruger theory has proven popular in management research and development, I found out as I was researching this. And at work, it can lead to the following. Companies recruiting people who seem confident but have difficulty fulfilling their job. People also with limited skills and knowledge gaining promotions while others with more expertise do not. This is something I see very, very often in um, Facebook groups. What will happen is people will have got into positions of power in film production, television production, but they they, ha- they literally haven't got any experience. They've, they've been upped for whatever reason to a position of line producer, say, or production coordinator, and they start getting onto forums because really they don't know what they're doing, and they start asking, how do you do such and such a thing? Or far more common is, does anyone know... Uh, lighting guy does anyone know a camera operator does that anyone know uh, and it does sound they, they don't have the contacts because they've not got the experience of it and that to me shows these people up as amateurs and unfortunately more and more and more and more i mean like t- to the point of insanity at the moment we've got people who have been elevated to these positions of power after only only a few years and they really don't know what they're doing anyway that's me going off on one uh, another thing that came up and this research was that it can lead to difficulty responding to constructive feedback, as I said before, so that the performance doesn't improve despite the guidance. And it also leads to the sharing and promotion of incorrect information. And as a few other things I, I noticed in there, it can lead to errors in decision making, uh, affect the prospects and performance of people reporting to a manager, and it can impact the effectiveness of effectiveness of the overall workforce just because you've been kind of infiltrated by people who have you know maybe got that microwave mentality where they've said they can do a job they believe they can do a job but they really really can't in fact they don't understand anything about the job is not uncommon and of course when it comes to underestimating our abilities someone pointed out to me just yesterday that it might be a problem i have myself and uh, I'm, I'm holding myself back from the successes that i deserve when it comes to underestimating our abilities, that becomes a real problem too. And I think we probably all know what that's about. With realisation of one's own potential and self-confidence in one's ability, one can build a better world. The Dalai Lama, unquote. So who is the who's affected by the Dunning-Kruger effect? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> my research tells me that we all are, because no matter how informed or experienced we are, everyone has areas in which they are uninformed and incompetent. But here are some tips that might help us to overcome the Dunning-Kruger effect. Number one is take time to reflect. Some people feel more confident when they make decisions quickly, but snap decisions can lead to errors of judgment. So reflecting on where we went wrong last time can help us to move forward. Number two Keep learning and practicing. If you're afraid to ask questions in case it reveals your inadequacies, say, um, then remember that no one knows everything. Asking the question or asking for help can enable you to move forward too. 
Number three, question what you know. Are there things about yourself or about the world that you have always believed and never questioned? Well, as the world changes, revisiting those beliefs can help us to keep up with those changes. So that's number three, question what you know. Number four, change your reasoning. Do you apply the same logic to every question or problem that you encounter? Well, trying new approaches to things will help you to break out of unhelpful patterns. That's something I recognise myself. I can get into patterns of thinking and, and, and I try to break them up. Habit is a, is a thing I'll probably do a, a few episodes on coming up, by the way. And finally, just learn from feedback. And I, I, again, I don't think as creatives, largely we've got a problem with this, but many people feel threatened by feedback. But feedback can help us to improve. And if you're unsure if feedback is fair... Just take the time to reflect on your own actions and performance before deciding if that other person is wrong. Don't just write it off. Well, sometimes it can be difficult to hear that sort of thing, feedback can provide valuable insights into how others perceive our abilities and it should be listened to. But as I say on number five, I'm quite open. I, th- I think it just from from when I was first started doing drama in Scottish Youth Theatre way back in the in the nineties. We were kind of forced to be open to feedback. It was a very creative and free and open kind of world that we were learning in back then. And I think I've carried it right through to today. I don't know if that's for everyone, but I kind of feel that in the creative world that usually, quite often, we are open to feedback. But if you're not, that could be a problem. That could be the Dunning-Kruger effect working. It's it's voodoo. Anyway, (laughs) just to sum up, the the Dunning-Kruger effect can cause us to overestimate and underestimate our abilities and this can affect uh, our progress and our confidence in various fields. It's one of the many cognitive biases that can affect our behaviours and decisions from the mundane to the life-changing. So while it might be easier to recognise the phenomenon, 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 the recognise the phenomenon in others, it is important to remember that it is something that impacts everyone. And by understanding the underlying causes that contribute to this psychological bias, you might be better able to spot these tendencies in yourself and find ways to overcome them. Or just spot when someone else is is lying or exaggerating or who's just come to believe in themselves and is out of touch with reality. That sort of person can, can really bring a production down, can really bring... Um, a project down so have an awareness of them i hope you found something interesting in all of this i don't know why i felt i had to do it i've had it written on my board for ages and i found the investigation of it as i, as I researched these episodes to be quite interesting myself i actually get far more out of it than i, than I thought i would have and uh, it's as i say it's turned into a longer episode basically than i'd anticipated but i hope there is some value here for you in next week's show, though, I'm going to have a quick look at the old... It'll hopefully be shorter, but sometimes when I dip into these things, it becomes more. But I'm going to take a quick look at the old adage, and it's one that, that comes up time and time and time again for me working in Scotland, that the prophet is not recognised in his own land. I am not saying I'm a religious, Jesus-like prophet. I'm just saying that that particular phrase applies more often than not to a lot of things that happen to myself or to other friends that are working in in the industry and I think it's one worth an investigation I hope to see you there but in the meantime I will end with some words from T. Harv Ecker who said if you are insecure guess what the rest of the world is too don't overestimate the competition and underestimate yourself you're better than you think Now take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting, and join me next time on Film Pro Productivity and Success. The executive producer on this season is David Richard Thompson, and the music that you're listening to right now, the awesome music, is Adventures by Ihimitsu. You can follow the show on Twitter at FilmProProdPod or on Facebook at FilmProProductivity. And there's also a full transcript of every episode of the show, including this one, only on the official website FilmProProductivity.com. Please continue to support the show by subscribing, spreading the word, and leaving an awesome review. <laughs>